before, after. Nothing fancy project. 50 BMG shooting. Join the Patreon clubhouse. You'll see it there. How about you, TD? Do you want to shoot a 50 BMG? Nah, I'm good. Why, bro? Everyone always says that. They're always Why? so surprised. I am surprised. Why? It's just not. It's not fun enough for the dollar spent. It is very, very expensive. Yeah. It really depends on which platform you're shooting. I was amazed at how comfortable the Barrett M82 was to shoot. Go watch my review. Didn't get away from the expense, though. Yeah. Especially the API. Dude. Nice thing. Dude. Yeah, it, it's... I wouldn't say it's a pussycat. I mean, it pushes, but and it is loud, but it, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so that's a different subject. We just talk about all kinds of different stuff here on Tabletop. TD is here. Yep. Thank you. Great to have you. It's going to be a big one. Uh, big one. Budget about 45 minutes for the initial development history, design work, uh, anecdotes... You know, from the lab when the boys were designed in the mag team bolts. notes. CTR. We're gonna go over the team notes. Interviews. We dragged some <laughs> old ass dudes out of retirement. You're gonna love it. Of they are how so the boring. CTR was developed. Oh yeah, yeah. All from one little kernel. Dude randomly was in the drive-through at Taco Bell, and he started working out this mechanism in his head. <laughs> oh my Next gosh. thing you know, he runs right in. They do an all hands at two in the morning. Oh my bolt. gosh. Oh man. <laughs> Still getting over sicknesses. Sorry. We are messing around. It is the AGM Neath Tabletop Review Nut and Fancy Project. Thanks for joining us. This is a DS32 4 megapixel or MP. All the testing is complete, dudes, and we have a lot to say. Uh, hopefully, what do you say, 25 minutes? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Not counting infield video. We're going to bounce to infield probably abruptly. I'll do some overlays too. Uh, if you're in a super hurry, you don't like our long format. You don't like us joking around that we're actually talking about the CR CTR stock. We're just messing around. Go to AGM's website, watch their video, buy the unit. When you buy the unit, come back and use the link below. Right there, dude. Taking you to Pro 2A Optics Planet. I will say at this point, TD, the night vision game here in the Nut and Fancy Project. I wouldn't say it's extensive, but I have a catalog at this point. It's gotten a lot better. Do you remember when you Nobody got sucked in to buy in the Gen One? Yeah, the Zeiss the Starlight, Starlight Scope. <laughs> that was huge. Do we? I don't think we reviewed that. Oh, do we? I think we. Did. I think we did, and it was you and I that reviewed yeah. it. So that was like kind of an outlier because we weren't really into NV. We didn't have a yeah. lot of money coming in. These days, I'll get it on loan, or I purchase it. That's how I'm totally getting them. Works, yeah. it? Oh, it so loaner unit it here, the Knife DS32. We're not kidding. It is a very capable, high-quality unit. Again, AGM Global impresses me. They're not the only game in town. Pulsar would be another brand. But uh, I just like what they've done. This is another unit that I reviewed. Where did it go? Uh, there it is. So this is a Rattler. TS35640. This is reviewed. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, go watch that review. This is a thermal unit, though. So we're, we're really not talking about a thermal unit here. We're talking about a digital camera mounted on the top of your gun. Uh, I elected to mount it on top of the old uh, Troy T-22 chassis for the 1022. It's a sweet ride. We'll talk about it here in a minute. But um, this is a digital camera, and it has digital camera capabilities. It has a night mode, day mode, uh, other modes like uh, defog. Auto, which you should probably leave the unit in. We'll talk about that again. And it also has, a, strangely enough, a nightclub dance mode. Yeah, it's really weird. It's kind of janky. So it's got this thing called auto nipple detection. Really? Well, see, it's meant for clubbing. So it automatically phases out strobe lights so you can still see. <laughs> and the idea was that they would edit out the nips <laughs> with just some blurry action, you know, kind of Japanese. Can it tell the difference between female and male That's nips? That's exactly the problem. They said no matter what they could, they could not get it to do anything but detect male nipples. <laughs> The ex it's completely pointless. Is it in the menu? Because no I went through the menu. I didn't see that. Well, they said if they get another round of IPO funding, they're going to actually if, dig in and do a firmware update. If you're going to go clubbing, pro tip, don't have it on top of your gun. Yeah. Handheld to detect with. Uh, yeah, there's some more of that sense of humor we're known for. So, yeah, dig into the night vision playlist for now. I'm still in YouTube, which is remarkable. Support me. Subscribe at the very least. Hit the notification bell at the very least. I am hugely shadow banned by YouTube, ABC, Google, 
a corrupt organization. You should know that by now. I say this, and yet all you guys love staying in YouTube because I've tried to take you to Rumble, YouTube, no one went over. It was like half a percent of my viewers. So I'm like, why, why work over there? I stay on YouTube because of the music. That's... <laughs> Well, really, you're listening to music. I don't watch anything on yeah. there. Yeah, so. copy that. I, I hey, as a creator, YouTube is amazing. L literally, yeah. their creator tools blow away every other platform. Rumble is garbage. Oh, YouTube so is garbage ass. for as a creator. They have so much Absolute money. Garbage. It's still so bad. It's like it's like literally 2006 YouTube. Yeah. All those platforms. Blah blah blah. Be a donor, by the way, down below. Thank you very much. I bought this unit. Uh, down below, you'll see a link to where I bought it. And uh, so far, so good. All the testing is complete. Again, we opted to mount it on a Troy T22. We'll talk about that super briefly. Do you still love it? Yeah. The chassis for the 1022. Yeah. I do too. It's a little heavy. Absolutely but... love it. I Duracoated that in Blackhawk Coyote Tan, probably what, 2010? Something like that, maybe 2000. Yeah, it was 2010 ish around there. You know, I still I use think. this kind of rail on my. Do you? The Troy AR. rail? The old yep, tra Troy like rail? It. It's a little bit heavy. Yep. Putting a rail on it adds a lot of weight to it. I think it is outmoded and obsolete. Yep. But, but I love yeah. the small diameter. Yep. It's a really small diameter. And I guess you. No, you're stuck with that one on the T22. I think these are super collectible, by the way. And yes, we know we have a loaded mag. It's coming out of an active system, so deal with it. Don't worry, we're safe. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's collectible. So if you were to get one, I think you, you'd easily make the money you spent on it. Yeah. Probably more, especially if it was coated or in nice condition like this. But I just thought I'd go with the 22 for, uh, honestly, for quietness so I wouldn't have to suppress it. Because at times I was shooting near, uh, I wouldn't say near people, but there are people within the vicinity, and I just wanted to be considerate. Carries far when it's quiet. Yeah, so if I'm shooting uh, the, Bar the Barrett, M82 with this thing, it would have kind of raised some eyebrows. Yeah. Probably would have woken the dead, too, actually, with that thing uncanned. Oof. Yeah, so what do I get in Unfancy? I, you know, you talked about the thermal units like the Rattler um, and the handheld units, too, like the Sidewinder by AGM Global. What should I get? I'm still a fan of the thermal. I said that with the Rattler review. I'm going to stick to that. I love thermal units for weapon mounts. Uh, I plan on doing a clip-on Rattler review, which will clip onto your scope. It really depends on your you guys supporting this type of content. If as a creator, I feel like it's kind of flatlining, I'm, I will say to myself literally, why bother? I got a lot of other stuff. A lot of other stuff. Right behind us, we have literally, how many items, TD? Uh, 27. 12. <laughs> if you count the compared options. Oh, yeah. If you go with the competitive options, 27 things to review. So we don't need to do this. It really depends on you guys is supporting this. I would go probably thermal, a Rattler unit, 640 in resolution, like I said in that review. That being said, this is a very capable unit. And it's much less expensive than the other stuff that I've reviewed so far. Now, it's not magical. It has some really good capabilities, although they're not thermal. Okay, but it's cost effective. It's IPX67 water resistance. We've tested it in day. We've tested it in night. We're planning to test it in the nightclubs, though. Yeah. Off the gun. Just handheld. Yeah. And we'll just see if People the... Think it's a camcorder. Yeah, to see if the ND mode works. Yeah. ND, nipple yeah. detection. Did Nip you detect. catch that? Nip detect. We'll see if that works. Patented, by the way. Philosophy of use, pest control, without rule of law, perimeter defense... Uh, fun just mounting it on a 22 and shooting at night is very entertaining true mm -hmm. you will like uh, impress your group like if you're out on a family function you go hey guys you want to go do some night vision shooting that's all you need to tell them send them out with a neath they will be super impressed this is not the first digital uh, camera that is weapon mountable that's been reviewed in TMP the other one was a psionics series of cameras this is just a standard a sport i think but i reviewed the black which is weapon mountable and i just used it to test test the steiner thor ir illuminator ir laser really is what it is um but these are consumer grade i said it in both of the reviews i said hey these are cost effective they're going to be about half the price of this unit this unit's actually very cost effective for the quality you're getting uh these work and I will say they work. You can mount it on like a handheld 
grip, which I've done, and you can like see in the night with it. They have little tiny batteries that mount up under here. There are several downsides to using a unit like this. One, it's not that sturdy of a unit. You can break it, not mil spec, if you want to use that term by any means. And then if you mount it on a gun, it has a recoil limitation. Hmm. So the Psyonix, I think the Pro and the Black are like 5.56 five, rated. Beyond that, they will not warrant it. So they so, wouldn't fare too hot on a SCAR 17. Now, I have heard guys mount it, and Tim Pierce told this, told me to this. They said, uh, Tim Pierce said, hey, I mounted it on a Sapper, and it worked well. A huge disadvantage of the Black Series, again, this isn't the Black, is how the battery interchanges. So it mounts, it comes out of the viewfinder. I don't have it, it in here. You have to take the whole viewfinder off, and then when it is weapon mounted on that Ferrotech mount, it completely gets in the way, so you actually have to take the whole thing off the pick yeah, rail sucks. to do it. So that really sucks. And they're tiny batteries. Go watch the review if you Does want more detail on that. Is it in it, though? No, it's just a camera. See, that's what so, I really So you would use, about. like, a, a red dot or something in front of it and piggyback it, and yeah. then you look through. I demoed that in the review. Yeah. I can tell he doesn't watch my reviews. I thought there was an option for it, though. An option to watch my reviews? No, it's mandatory. No, to, to turn on <laughs> crosshairs and that. Well, because I, I in actually here, I'm talking ammo. I'm in the. I'm. T are you talking about the psionics? Yeah. There's no. I don't think there's crosshairs on it. And even yeah. if you did, there's going to be so much wiggle in the mount. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's there's worthless. no. It's just a camera. It's actually a day camera and it has a night vision mode. You can see I marked them here. I'm mentioning this because I want to let you know that this is a very cost effective way to get in to a night vision system. This is way better, way better. So take all the capabilities of the Psyonix Aurora series, amp them up a little bit, there's a Neath. That's pretty much it. Okay, so philosophy of use will be the standard. Let's talk, I guess, kind of briefly, because guys, eyes glaze over when I get into the, the, the capabilities and stuff. Unless you own the unit, you probably won't remember. You dialed into the video to know, hey, is this thing worth buying? So I'm trying to deliver that to you. Here we go. I'm going to dig into the features. I'm going to tell you why it's a way better unit than probably a lot of other night vision camera systems. Okay, number one. It uses an 18650 non-proprietary battery right here, dudes. Man, I cranked that tight. Did you crank that on? Mm -hmm. That's tight. You can see the waterproofness of the cap there. O-ring sealed. Look at the O-ring. And that's not a cheesy O-ring. And I just have an O-light. Again, non-proprietary yeah. 18650. They say it's good for five and a half hours, I think. True. If it's cold weather, I find, you again, you can cut that in half. You're looking yeah. at about two hours in cold. And that's constant use, yeah. like with reticle use, yeah. recording use, because I'm doing recording. Speaking of which, onboard recording, 64 gigabytes of uh, memory capability. I do wish it had an SD card. How about yeah. you? With a waterproof slot, I think it would just be easier. Yeah. One reason they're not doing it be is because, like everybody else, they're pushing a freaking app. It's the AGM Connect app. It, this thing does have Wi-Fi. I think it connects to the app through Wi-Fi. I didn't do any of that. I don't need a damn app. But I don't want another app. It does use your standard Type C connector. Well, they include it. It's pretty nice. It's, it's got a, a good right cable. angle. Yeah, right angle USB yeah. C to A. And it just mounts like a normal hard drive on your computer. Multi-purpose, like TD's mentioning. So to get the images off the internal memory, you'll come out of the port if you don't use the app. Yeah. Okay. Another uh, purpose for this is onboard charging. Another huge thumb up, Very thumbs cool. up for the Neath. Yeah. Because you could put on like a 10,000 milliamp battery, run your USB-C cord, and ha affix your battery to your end somehow. Another yeah. reason you want to run a handguard that's free-floated. And dude, you never run out of power. And I will warn you now, if you buy this, hide that cable because right angle cables are always in demand. Mm, okay, good to know. I've lost the one that came with this already. Yeah. Well done, by the way. Okay, so that's this side. It comes with a, a scope cap. Uh, easier to operate, I think, than the Rattlers. It just has a little tab right there. I could talk about all the optics and the field of view, but no one gives a shit. So on we go to this side. There's your uh, IR illuminator. If you go in the auto mode, it will detect it and it will turn it on automatically if you have the auto mode selected and you can turn it on manually as well. Dig into your manual will tell you how to do it. I really didn't use it too much with the shooting because I thought it was a little bit limited, 
They're saying that this will detect out to 400 meters and that their onboard illuminator won't go out that far, but yeah. I thought it was giving me some illumination out to about 80 to 100 if memory serves. The reason I didn't want to dick with it is because I like the firepower side of the equation and I went with this. This is a unique fire. I think that's a 940. Yeah, nine, 940 nanometer illuminator running off an 18650 battery. I think it's focusable as well. It has a little light that turns on the back, lets you know it's on. I just, I'm just running in a high quality Leopold scope ring. This is a 30 millimeter body. It is, I wouldn't say it's the best tactical illuminator out there. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, invisible to the naked eye. So when this is on, no one can see it unless you have a night vision device in use. So what we're trying to do is flood the area with infrared light which this does see in night mode and then you can see the target and we're doing overlays as we're talking so you can see exactly what we're talking about and you're seeing it being flooded with that unique fire and I do recommend it they are very inexpensive I'll put a link below I don't know how long they're gonna last I bought it from Amazon so for this one I'm gonna send you to Amazon I think around 54 dude yeah totally doable that's cool because rabbits can't see in ultra <coughs> they can't they can't no bunnies gophers right uh, deer how about baby seals no nah. over water or underwater you <laughs> over water you ought to see their expression when you take them by yeah. surprise they're like what where see, did that guy see, come from seals cones in their eyes they're actually <laughs> rods and cones yeah rods and cones how about bad guys depends oh then there's that then there's that they there's might another, be under equipped uh, it may give you a tactical advantage that's the reason why you're watching. I know it. I know it. That's why you're watching. Yeah. On we go to the mount. A cantilever type. You can see that is very helpful because uh, you'll need it for eye really. I can't speak eye relief issues. We have the CTR stock, which uh, apparently Tactical Doodle wants to make a six-hour video on. Yep. And uh, I do recommend, obviously, an adjustable stock when you're running your Neath or uh, you know some type of optic like it. You will find what's comfortable for you. You have an eye bellows here. It is needed. You do need it. Now you could kind of plan on like or practice with it off if you want to take it off. I just used it. I liked it. Yeah. But I did find that I need to mount this on the T22 pretty far back, like you see. Yeah. And the cantilever allowed it. Super quality cantilever mount that comes with it. And they have some brand. I forget which brand I it is shot my rattler after taking it on and off to see uh -huh. if it returns to zero but the fact that this is qg should be a pretty big plus yeah because a good pou for this is just snooping on your neighbors if you're in a okay a declining area perhaps yeah which and you're wondering, uh, td uh, may or may not be in right now if you're thinking hey what are those people doing on the corner mm, there yeah is that that man yelling and fighting demons well or? honestly you're going back to the sidewinder philosophy of use the handheld yeah and i did say that in the rattler they can be handheld observation yeah. devices a nod mm -hmm. and it is very advantageous just to see what the heck is going on yeah okay another big plus and this thing does not cost an arm and a leg i you might want to just consider getting the not the neath i said call it the nice sometimes but the neath on we go to the buttons. This is your power button. This is your mode button. And this is your selection wheel, something like that. That's, Again. I think you only use that when you're either playing Pac-Man or changing modes. Pac-Man, right. Yeah. Well, I did Asteroids with it, too. Oh. There's Asteroids in there. That's it's cool. It, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say it's, like, really nice because the screen's so small. Yeah. And I, I got wasted a lot. I yeah. went to, I went, I think the farthest I got in here was, like, round five. Oh, that sucks. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. You don't even right. show up on the leaderboards on AGM Connect's <laughs> app. If you go to the app, your high score will post. Tell you what, though, the speedrunner's about a field day. <laughs> What's How about Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's a I, classic I games. That. Oh, my gosh. This Guys will probably quit it. watching it, it by now. It doesn't have enough uh, graphics power. It doesn't have enough power. You need something power. about twice as expensive. Oh, my gosh. Uh, now, everybody's quit watching, so we probably ought to rush through the rest of this. Uh, so power on here. One thing I like about this versus the Sidewinder, multiple times with the Sidewinder, I ended up pressing the power off button when yeah. I wanted to press the record button. Okay, so where am I at? Uh, no, maybe not this unit. Is it? It's probably the Sidewinder. I've I'm thinking of this though, because these aren't easy to distinguish particularly. If you're gloved, it's easy to because you're reaching make up and feeling. Yeah. Keep in mind, this is hanging out on mm -hmm. your gun as you're right. trying to stay on target, so it's easy to kind of. 
less with this, more with the hand handheld, the Taipan or the Sidewinder, which mm. I've reviewed both of them. Those buttons are very close together. This one isn't. I like how this one's red. You may say, well, you're at night. You won't be able to tell. You can tell. So it's nice. And it's super simple on the Neath. But the problem is that means these will have several functions. The one thing I'm going to tell you is this is how you're going to select your mode. And I wondered if it would like, can I detect like my Deerkin friends in day mode? And so I checked it out, had a regular flashlight on it, not the IR illuminator. And what do you know? It worked. You can see it. A little bit grainy, a little bit grainy. But then you can go to, by pressing this, long pressing it, I believe, you go to day, night, defog, nightclub, and auto. Sweet. Yeah. And I would think most of y'all would probably want to run it in auto. Yeah. Okay. And then here you're going to get, uh, there's a picture in picture here, short press of M. So if you just tap this, you'll get a little, you'll see that with us shooting. You'll see a picture in picture screen there. I find that most of the guys have nods like this. Love that. They love it. It's awesome. The digital sensor, by the way, is 2560 by 1440. That's pretty darn high resolution for the price you're paying. Very excellent. And this thing has five reticles and multiple selections on your reticle groups. So you, in other words, if this went from gun to gun to gun, different calibers, you can have a ballistics profile for each gun. Clamp it on, you select that ballistics profile, and it's going to be pretty darn close. You may not, if you're an, a reticle autist, you might be less than impressed. Agree, agree. Reticle spec. Yeah, and you're going to see what reticle I mostly shot with, what the one TD shot with. Um, it's limited. Maybe it has to do, because they... they often Slender. talk about it in terms of hunting there is a kind of hunting people are like 10 years when you look at the tactical game they have these wild reticles that are all you know i understood understood let me say this ot this this is a, a good point i'm glad you brought this up is i think agm does a really good job of not over complicating yeah. it because when you get in the menu and you'll press and hold this to get in your menu you'll select the menu items with a rotation of the selector knob don't overwhelm guys most of the features that you guys watching this video that are in here, you probably won't use. But here's the counterpoint. Why can they not just make it downloadable digitally? It's a digital scope. What? It's a digital scope. I you should be able to download. Download crazy. what? I should be able to new reps. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I want like a crazy, User -definable. insane, oh, you know, all these different things. But why not? Who knows? I didn't get the app. Maybe they in don't. future I versions. Looked. I, I okay. looked on the Rattler at least. Okay, dudes. My two cents is... I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't care. It's a night vision device. You give me just a simple uh, reticle, I'm good with it. Now, there are some reticles, as I recollect, that do have some ballistic holdover yeah. points on them. You're going to have to spend some time with it, with a load, keep it on a single gun, and know where that hits. And actually, for ultimate accuracy, that's probably a good approach. You keep it on one gun, and it's always on there, and you know it's accurate. And you keep the battery charged up, ready to rock. Uh, temperature range is minus 22 Fahrenheit to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's amazing. Huh. Melt that rubber. Right 131 face. Fahrenheit, actually. Again, IPX67 is what you have there. Um, in the menu system, it, this is always a really hard thing to cover because I want to tell you what it does, but I don't want you guys to like zone out on me. We'll do overlays of us shooting while I rip through this really quick. Stand by. Uh, one thing I love, they have, uh, like, um, what am I trying to say? Shot recording. So, a shot activated recording. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so, and you can actually change the dwell time. So, before and after, and it will keep recording. Oh. So, I, that that is, again, a hunting thing. Because yeah. guys want to show them, you know, on, yeah. you know, what they shot and killed on their hunt, I guess. Uh, let's rip through this. Uh, audio, too. We mentioned that. That you have audio in it. Yeah, That's a big plus. You can turn it off and on. It is kind of adjustable, too. I think there's something that adjusts in there. I forget what it is. On-screen display. You can determine what displays on screen. Language. Time sync. That's where you set date. Time. And I find that when I do battery changes, it maintains it. It doesn't lose it. At least for a short period of time. Auto power off. I set mine for 30 minutes. Unit, yards or meters, restore version, network, that's your Wi-Fi stuff. That Brightness. Part you might not like if you're hunting a bigger, more technologically advanced game. Because there's no, Copy that. no guaranteed way to turn it off. Wi-Fi's off. Oh that. There's not gotcha. like a hard switch where you go, I want that uh, chip powered down so okay. that's a good point. If you're actually. Paranoid. Brightness, contrast, picture in picture, we talked about it. Smart smart IR. 
helps correct overexposed images and also can improve your dance score with Dance Dance Revolution. Sweet. That's oh, messed up. Only for PS2. Bullshit. Yeah, for PS2 Dance Dance uh, Revolution. Why in the hell is that in here? I don't I, It's a carryover. Measure. You can measure deer, gray wolf, nipple diameter, hmm. brown bear, <laughs> custom. That could actually be helpful. Custom, Sir. you can just say, I don't know, whatever the game you might be hunting. 300 yards, 2 o'clock, pepperoni. <laughs> oh. Radical groups. Um... It's user saved reticle settings. Again, you can change the color to reticle type, ballistic profiles to each. Reticle, five types of reticle, seven colors. Pre record, we talked about that. How about zeroing? Okay, just like the other AGM devices, it is technically a one shot zeroing process, it's meaning that you'll shoot, and you may see some overlay of me zeroing this in, and then you just keep the, the gun you have it on very stable. And you'll use your X, Y coordinates, and I, you're using this wheel as I recollect. You're just moving the crosshairs to the round that impacted the paper. Shoot again and you'll be pretty close. Let me say this. This is way easier to zero than a thermal device that you actually need a thermal something something to see. So what I used were like little heat packs. I would cut like a 2 by 2 inch square in the back of my cardboard. I duct tape it. You could do it in daytime or nighttime. And by the way, AGM's YouTube channel has some great videos there on how to do all this. I'm talking thermal zeroing. Also videos on this. That one was a little oh, bit more okay. involved. Yeah. This one's easier because you can do it in daytime. It's like a scope. Yeah. Speaking of which, how would you like shooting this in the day? It was cool. Did you feel like you were at a disadvantage <laughs> optically? No. Okay. okay. We were there right around twilight too. So. Oh, great. Kind of got the it works best good as a scope, yeah, so it? TD loved it. Yeah. Uh, is it as good and as clear as a, a no kidding, a standard optical scope? No, it's not. If you really want maximum resolution and all the, you know, the optical performance, you're not going to get this because this is an electronic device. It's going through the sensor system and it's just producing an image to your eyeball. I mean, the very fact that you skewer right through the optic with the battery is kind of trippy. Yeah. Pull it out the first time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. You're not looking through it. It's an electronic device. But that being said, I this is more capable than the Sweet. ATN Thor 4K that I reviewed. Because yeah. the daylight performance of that, that was also a electronic camera scope. They much, much larger than this. Mm. I thought the optical performance on this one was way better than the ATN uh, Thor 4K. Um, I still like that. I still have that unit, but this blows it away. In size, weight, which by the way, it's eight and a half inches long, two and a half inches in diameter. Or, I'm sorry, three and a half inches in diameter. And then uh, that's about it. 17 ounces without the battery, more or less. So it's much lighter. But if you want op true optical performance, go with a damn scope, a real scope. Yeah. And I'll have some links below. Something like that Arrowhead Swamp Fox 1 to 10 power. I think it's insane. Great AR-15 scope. There you go. That's a review. Uh, it is highly recommended. It's a durable, well-built unit. I don't think it costs uh, a lot at all for what you're going to get. And it's weapon switchable. TD. Yeah, I would like it. Would you take it to the dance club? Uh, yeah, I would like him to fix the nipple issue first. That might be a software upgrade via the app. So the question I have for you is, would you buy a thermal scope like the AGM Rattler 640 variety? Much, much more expensive, very capable, uh, thermal, so it does not need any type of illumination device whatsoever to see the uh, rats in yeah. the field or this. I would go at less than one third the price thermal okay. for a rifle scope. Yeah, and then I would put yeah because I would rather have go. like nods for night vision. Uh, okay, so you have like a PVS fourteen unit yeah. that you're walking around with, so you yeah. can observe with. Okay, gotcha. Now with that, you're not going to interface with this because the PVS fourteen doesn't interface very yeah, well. I'm just saying I would put the money towards that. <coughs> I would get the okay. specialized thermal optic for the rifle. Yeah, and then have nods that are more general Good. use across other platforms. And no doubt you guys watching this video have made those decisions. You're making those decisions, how best to spend your nod dollar. So if you have the PVS 14, one way you can do it is just run that, right? Don't let yeah. your batteries run out by the way. And you're probably going to have to wear a helmet all the time. Yep. But then you could have like an IR laser. Yeah. The Balder IR laser, which by the way, they're not making anymore. Cool. When I went to their website, Bad job, O light. It's all right. Or, or the Steiner Tor Mini IR laser I just reviewed, or the Steiner D ball 
DBAL. That was amazing. Yeah. But then you can like you can like hold your gun and see your IR laser. Yeah. There's disadvantages with every system. They're all very battery um, intensive. Yeah. Every system. And Murphy's Law means it's probably going to run out on you if you don't plan accordingly. As such, if you're going to use this Neath for serious purposes, we highly recommend you carry at least two charged up 18650s, maybe more. And in a serious uh, situation, I'd probably really consider about running a cord yeah. with an external battery I would supply. I at least keep that with me. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys will like the images this produces. Uh, they are pretty excellent and uh, for the money remember for the money yeah this is not a six thousand dollar unit it's le way less than a thousand dollars way less yeah About there you 800 go 800 street right now and it will probably go down yeah and i think optics planet it's even less sweet depends i hate saying prices because they're yeah, commodities they, they go great. up and down and by the way agm is always improving these units this is this generation and who knows what in the future they'll do uh but hopefully they get that nipple detection thing worked out yeah. this is a uss Alabama, there's the data on it. Do you remember touring that boat when you were a yeah. little boy? It's a cool little thing. Yes. Great camouflage job on that. Now, that was called the DAPL camouflage pattern. They thought it would, like, confuse enemy gunners for the speed and direction of the ship. Uh, they found out it didn't really work that well. And it was probably more work than it was worth, well, but it sure no looked one, cool. Uh, by World War II, or what is using radar guns. Yeah, that's another reason. Exactly, radar. So they do over the horizon shot with yeah. radar. This is a Heinschel HE-129 from the Eastern Front. Very interesting plane. Oh, very interesting. Very cool plane. Uh, I've seen like guys who play those video games. What are some video games that have this? That War Thunder. Yeah, they, they just rail on Soviet tanks with this. Really cool. Look at that thing right there. Uh, I can't remember if those are 30 mil cannon or 22 long rifle. But look at that thing. Look at the camouflage pattern. So cool. We have a Benchmade 940 on deck right here. Can't open it because of my gloves. Classic. Oh, you used it to peel an orange. That's huh. why. There you go. They don't make this version anymore, I don't think. That very elegant, lengthened clip blade. I'm not so sure. There you go. The real fun part is the spine, though. That right there? Yeah, that looks So top. pretty. So pretty. Say and comment if you reach the end of this video and you have an Osborne 940 of whatever flavor, it is still highly recommended. Thanks again. We are signing off. None Fancy Project, shadow banned for many years, supported by donors. Over and out. Thanks, boys.